I'm going to speak for Kirby when I say this. It's an embarrassment that Florida State's players opted out. It's a damn shame that we had to get the brake speed off of us like this. This was a glorified scrimmage game. Kirby Smart had a couple words that he wanted to give. Seemed like he was clapping on the uh, college football committee, did he not? That's 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 what it seemed like. Seemed like Kirby Kirby was Kirby was ready to go. He had he had enough of this. He said he said, "Suit me up, I'll play." He does not like what the committee has done. He did not like the game that was played. And it just seemed like he wanted Florida State at full strength, which is very co commendable from what he said. So we're gonna let y'all listen to the sound clip, the little sound bite of what he said. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe this will be a bad sound bite. But people need to see what happened tonight. And they need to fix this. It needs to be fixed. It's very unfortunate that they, who has a good football team and a good football program, are in the position they're in. Everybody can say it's their fault. It's their own problem. All right? Everybody can say that we had our guys and they didn't have their guys. I can listen to all of that. But college football has got to decide what they want. And I know things are changing. Now things are, things are going to change next year. And you know what? There's going to still be bowl games outside of those. People got to decide what they want and what they really want to get out of it. Because it's really unfortunate for those kids on that sideline that had to play in that game that didn't have their full arsenal. And it affected the game 100%. So, with all that being said, thanks, Kirby, for stepping up to the plate and saying the things that normal people don't want to say <laughs> when, it, when it comes to this. The unfortunate part is that they put 60 on Florida State. It was the worst loss that we've ever taken in the school's history. I see as no far problem as, with this. Oh, well, yeah, because you're a Florida fan. Correct. I wanted some happiness. <laughs> But if I could go on a little rant here for those that didn't hear, and I'm going to let these two talk because I think, uh, of course, I'm the closest to this situation. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I went to a restaurant and I did not want to, I, I only watched a little bit of the game because I knew what it was going to be. Colby texted me before the game. Hold on. Let me, let me just, did you let me just, the DMs? <laughs> of course he did. Of course the he did. DMs. Let, let me. Just tell you what he said. He, he probably said, said, I'm sorry. Repent he for said, my sins. <laughs> These are his exact words. Good luck, brother. Hope no one gets hurt. My response back to him was, I now want Georgia to beat our A double snakes by 50 with everyone that opted out. Okay. They, they beat us. 60. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So they beat us 50 plus, and he said, You spoke it into existence. And I proceeded to send him the Nostradante face. Oh, not <laughs> the one that I did. Okay. <laughs> when we get in the Nostradante shirts, I think, I think it is time. I think I deserve those shirts. I think, I think you deserve it. Yeah. My track record spoke for itself this whole football season <laughs> when it came to just these situational predictions, just one after another after another. I said from the beginning that Florida State deserved to get beat by 50 if all these players opted out. You could go through the whole roster. Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman, Trey Benson, all these dudes, Jaheim Bell, the whole damn starting roster. It's the whole team. Jared Verse pretty much said that he was going to opt out if they didn't make it. So he said that months ago. He he alluded to it. But everybody else that was a part of this squad, if you was so mad going into this game after all of America was on your side, literally, you could have took a poll in America, and I would say about 80% of the people thought that Florida State shouldn't have made it. Not the, not the fact that we didn't agree with them not making it we wouldn't have been upset but did we think that they were not equipped to play the four teams or even georgia no i still think they would have got smashed by georgia by at least 20 points full strength but that's just my opinion as a florida state fan to send the message that you guys were serious would be to not have opted out at this game and at least gave your team a chance 
you made not only an embarrassment of the school, but you made an embarrassment out of all the players that were backups this whole year that were not prepared to play a caliber of team of Georgia. How does that send a good message to your friends because you care more about your NFL career than you did about sending a message to the country that you guys possibly should have been there in the top four. This was your time to do it. Out of every single team that played in the New Year's Six Bowl that wasn't playing for the college football championship, you guys had every reason to stay, stay in and on the team to send a message. It was either that you were scared or that you just didn't care that this was an historic season by Florida State. I think this was like, what, our fifth undefeated season. And you guys decided to opt out. I'm embarrassed to be a Florida State fan after this weekend. Not because of the score, but because of all those 20 players that decided not to play that were all starters. I don't wish nothing bad on the kids. Hey, go and get your money. But in the NIL world, you really don't have the excuse because all those players got a little bit of the change. We're talking about Keon Coleman. We're talking about Johnny Wilson, Trey Benson, Jaheen Bell. Are you telling me those kids did not get some type of check for staying at Florida State or playing at that school? You got to be kidding me. These, these kids are beyond rich at this point. <laughs> so if you're going to tell me, oh, it's my dream to go to the NFL, you did. A guy that proved everything to us and continuously get slammed because of his age. Bo Nix said he, he wanted to play in the bowl game because he felt like he owed it to his teammates. And he went in there and proceeded to beat the brakes off of Liberty. And now he is as beloved, if not more beloved by Oregon fans than Marcus Mariota was. That's how you send your teammates off. That's how you send your teammates off. But that's all I got to say, man. I, I the, With all that being said, I agree with what Kirby said. It's an embarrassment to college football. But more so. That's school. And then you're just going to leave like that. I get, you know, you've got the money or, oh, the injury. But look at what guys like Matt Corral did. They had the same option. And, yes, he got injured. But he still wanted to give it all to his team. You know, these are – players these are his brothers that he spent again three four or five however many years with on the football field on the battlefield so it's it's kind of a low blow there especially with how everybody again you had a lot of people being like oh my god florida state was robbed they need to they need to you know be in the college football playoffs all that stuff it doesn't matter that jordan travis was out all that you know all of that kind of stuff you had all that talk going this was your chance to suit up and kick Georgia's ass, and instead you lay down, died, and proved the committee that they were right. So everybody that was defending you, you have also let down. Even if they weren't Florida State fans, you have let them down. You went on live national television in a New Year's Six Bowl and got that ass spanked. It's like when a dad says, put your hands on the bed, boy. He Georgia got the switches out right now, man. <laughs> it was it was bad. And just, again, players opting out of bowls. I, I get it. But now you have NIL deal. You're not hurting for money. Uh, I mean, to kind of to quote defensive, li defensive lineman for Clemson, Tyler Davis, he's a senior. He'll be at the senior bowl. Um, one of the things that he stated when asked about, oh, why didn't you opt out? It was something that's been instilled in me. It's important to finish, end quote. I mean, there are some guys that have just had this drilled into them that, hey, I owe this to my team. And I guess a lot of players on Florida State just didn't have that instilled into them. I'm going to tell you right now, this is what this whole game made Florida State and every single person that defended Florida State look like. <laughs> Clown show. Clown show. Well, so here, here's kind of my thing, though. <clears throat> if, you, if you're going to opt out, you know, usually most of the opt outs are high, high level players, which Florida State has plenty of them. Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson, Jaheim Bell, Ventro Cypress, Jared Verse. Like we know they're high. 
high, high level players, maybe not all first rounders, which is kind of where you make a little bit of a difference. But I think a lot of people would look at this and say, yeah, Mike Norvell just doesn't have the culture. You know, these players just don't want to play for the team in the last game of the year. But I don't think that's completely true. If you look at all the starters, most of the starters on that, that offense and defense, most of them, our transfers, Keon Coleman, Trey, ben- Trey Benson, Tra- Oregon, Keon Coleman, Jaheim Michigan Bell. State, Jaheim Bell, South, South Carolina. Carolina, Ventrell Cypress, Virginia Tech. So here, the, the point I'm making is though, it, all the players on that team that did play, or all the players that did come from the the mud that Mike Norvell pulled out of Florida State from what Willie Taggart left, were proud to play in that game. And that's just kind of as simple as you could put it. And it's a damn shame that this game was played without one of the dudes has been there for his teammates that I can almost guarantee next year is going to go off. And I hope that he does. And his name is Lawrence Toa Philly. The only reason he didn't play in this damn game is because he had to have surgery. Yeah. And if he was in that yeah. game, do you not think that he'd be he he'd send a statement to Georgia? He started doing it at the end of the season when Trey Benson had all this hype and barely ran for it. He didn't even get a thousand yards this year. And he was supposed to be our guy. He was supposed to be a Heisman candidate this year. Well, Uh, he was voted what? Like top three returning running backs. And and then damn near was was not anywhere close to that. Blake Corum and uh, Nick Singleton, not in that order. But, you know, those were like the top three that everybody had early on of, oh, Trey Benson. Mm-hmm. I wish nothing but success for Tola Philly next year because he's an original Seminole. He came there and he's been waiting all these years to get his start. And next year is going to be his. If they don't start him, it's going to be a travesty. But I think what he proved at the end of the season is that he's going to be the starter next year in Florida State. And he damn well better be. And I hope he heals really good from his surgery. Because next year he's going to send a statement to everybody that's ever doubted him, and I'm—I'll be scared for a lot of people. That's the dude that I want on this team, not Trey Benson, not Jaheim Bell, who didn't show up for half the season, not Keon Coleman, not Johnny Wilson. These overblown dudes. Let's 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 call a ball a ball, a striker, strike here. Jordan Travis was everything to our offense, mm-hmm. everything, and even I was a little disrespectful when it came to him because. I mean, granted, on the other side of that, I seen Jordan Travis suck for years until last year. Shout out to Mike Norvell and whatever he's doing with quarterbacks. He might, be, if he turns around DJU, he will be the next Lincoln Riley. <laughs> Mark my words, a lot of quarterbacks are going to want to come and play for Florida State if he's able to turn. DJ you around and make him like elite. I'm I'm scared for the ACC next year, or what what we might be able to do. No, oh, if you're even in the ACC still. Oh, we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, you'll be there. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't happening. Oh yeah, but. true for next year. Never mind. So I don't know. I this Kirby Smart sent the message. I'm glad that he did. Because it was an absolute disgrace, you know. I mean, on the college football committee's part, the well, not not on their part, but he said that as far as the college football committee for not letting them in Florida State in, I don't blame them. But I I agree with his frustrations. I'll put it like that. You know what I'm saying? I agree with his frustrations. But really, the frustration should be with those kids that opted out. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. They are out of everybody. If nobody's going to say it, if Florida State fans are not going to say it, I'm going to say it. Those 20 plus kids that opted out, this is absolutely falls on their shoulders for being not only bad teammates, but they could have sent a, a message to all of America if they want to win this game. And and yeah. really, we would have been having an interesting conversation today about this. But, yeah, I mean, we could have absolutely yeah. gone on a rant of, all right. The committee did get it wrong. They should have absolutely, even without, you know, Jordan Travis. And then Florida State kind of kicked themselves in the butt there. Mm-hmm. Well, imagine imagine this, too. And, and we'll move on to the next thing after I say this. 
not only did you let your teammates down, and I'm looking at Keon Coleman, Jaheen Bell, Trey Benson, and Johnny Wilson. You know who you let down most of all that you guys were riding for? Jordan Travis. Yeah. I mean, the dude literally said in his um, – it might have just been a tweet. I don't think it was any specific letter, but he, he was even saying, if, if if me being injured caused us being out, I wish I was injured earlier in the season mm -hmm. just so you could see yeah. the town. I mean, the dude fought for y'all. He literally died for y'all, basically. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting like this. I don't usually get upset about football, but now I'm starting to get livid, just like thinking from his perspective, bro. Like these? Like I'm I'm like starting to get pissed off now. Like I didn't even think about that until now. You you literally I didn't until you, uh, yeah, that was an excellent point. I didn't even think about you know how you're letting down Jordan Travis. Because again, he you saying that made me go back to him. Again I, again, I think it was a tweet or whatever, but they put it on ESPN and all that stuff. Dude was hoping that he, if him being – he basically said, if me being out is the reason why, I wish I was out for the rest of the season earlier. You wouldn't have had that draft stock then. He would have been a lower draft stock. That's affecting his future, but he don't care. Could it, you could have sent – like you, like you, could, you could have sent a message, but you just basically kicked – Jordan Travis in the nuts and said, oh, I don't care that you got injured. Don't care. That's great. And let me just let me just also say for people that just think that Georgia would have rolled over FSU if all the starters played, this is the thing. Georgia's second string and third string are as talented as Florida State's backups, but Florida State's backups could have could have matched up head to head with Georgia, I think, if everybody was playing. Yep. So uh, let's just get that straight. I mean, of yeah. course, with Jordan Travis, but you know, it'd be it's kind of foolish to sit there and just say Georgia would beat the dog snaps out of FSU regardless of all starters. Yep. I mean, it's it's silly to say. Yeah, what's up, Nate? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Ryan said Clemson will be back, and I can't wait for the for the FSU game. Yeah, that's that's going to be a banger next year. So mm -hmm. Kirby was right, and what he said about the committee. I will speak for him. Like I said, sh shame on the 20 players that opted out. This solely falls on your shoulders. Uh, sh shame on you for letting Mike Norvell down that's been fighting for you guys all season. Shame on you for letting Jordan Travis down. Shame on you for letting this program down. Shame on you for... Down, the people that defended you saying they should have been in the committee. Yeah, thanks for making all of America seem like a bunch of fools for fighting for you. <laughs> You uh, you even let recruits down in the future of the program. K.J. Bolden said after that game, he said, wow, dang, I'm glad I'm not on that side anymore. And he's the one that flipped from FSU to Georgia. So he's he's even sitting there like, yep, glad I picked the right side. Yeah. So y'all yeah. did that. That's what yeah. everybody that said. It's, it's ironic, did. too, because they were like, oh, well, what does it say to the recruits? I could go undefeated and still not get into the playoffs. And then you basically – Flip, you basically hit yourselves in the face with that one rather than show the recruits, hey, we're going to fight and show that they made a mistake. You just said, man, we'll get them next year. If Silas Bolden ends up transferring to us with Tola Philly and DJU, and the core of that defense is still there, because you know what you did, and, and all of this is you made that defense better because they're not going to want to get smashed like they did next year. So, when you look at it from that perspective, they're gonna, it's gonna be angry next year for Florida State. It really is. It's it, We're gonna be the bad boys of, of college football next year. I, I just, I just feel like that that's, that's coming. And if DJU is good and goes out there and balls out, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Cause <laughs> this is the land of misfit children right now. Think about it. You this this team got embarrassed. Hmm. Mike Norvell, uh, Mike Norvell is pissed. DJU wants to get back at Clemson. Lawrence Tolafili has been behind starter after starter after starter for years. He's coming back. Silas Bolden is probably going to come and join his buddy after his coach said he wasn't leaving and he left. And all the other all the other kids that haven't been talked about this whole time. Time. I'm not talking about the bad boys like that people are going to hate us. I'm talking about like 
people are going to hate playing this. There's a lot. And 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 for for those that don't know, I don't I don't talk about Florida State like that. I, I don't. As a Florida State fan, I don't hype up Florida State. He's probably but one I, of the few Florida State fans that said, "No, we don't deserve to be in. The, we don't need to be in the playoffs." Yeah, I'm the one that said that we didn't deserve to be there. But like when you look at the trajectory of everything that just happened, and if you don't think that we're not going to come with the pressure next year, I don't know what to tell you. Our first game is going to tell you everything. And however we finish that game, it's going to set up the rest of our season. And Clemson and versus Florida State is going to be fireworks. You know you? Uh, that is a good question. Let I know, me look up FBS. I know schedules. we know, or Fisher and I have Miami week one. I can't remember who it was. Mm -hmm. So Florida State, our first week we play... Uh, LSU. Again? Oh, no, I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> I was like, for three years? So we played Georgia Tech our first game oh, in Ireland. That's right. We play in Ireland. So we oh, play yeah, in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, oh that's good. Cool. That's good. Cool. Ooh, that's going to be good. Yeah. Angry runs. Angry runs. <laughs> Angry runs. <laughs> mark this down right now. Philly's about to go for 150. Mark, mark this down right now. His third rush of the game is going to go for 75 on the touchdown. Oh, <laughs> Philly? After after we're already going to be up with DJ throwing two touchdowns, it's going to be 14-0. And at the beginning of the second quarter, Tola Philly's going to take the ball off the first play that we get back for 75 yards and a touchdown. And people are going to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> be like, who's oh, that? Oh, yeah. And we're going to be saying... If you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> the <laughs> chef is here with with Durag DJ and the Slim Reaper Silas Bolden. If he comes, <laughs> boy, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm excited. All right, let's get let's get off this topic because I could go on and on. And on. Well, at least we've got uh, at least we got 2007 on uh, on Blu-ray there fishing. <laughs> hey, yep. 